This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world, with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, we have a returning guest, and you know, it's been way too long uh, for this guy to come back on our show. He was back on the show April 3rd, 2017. At that time, I told you I liked the stock. You could have picked it up around two cents. Right now, it's trading between four and five cents a share. We're talking no other than uh, Air Test Technologies, ATI, Air, Ter- Air Test Technologies, Inc. Well, they trade on the uh, TSX Venture up there in Canada, ticker symbol AAT. They also trade on the OTC markets down here in the States, AATGF. And with us today is the CEO of that company, going to bring us up to date and up to speed of what's been going on for the last nine months is no other than George Graham. George, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah. You know, give my listeners a little bit about statement of how you guys make your money and, and what you guys are all about. Well, AirTest has been around for some time and we've, we uh, have been involved in, in uh, control, uh, controlling HVAC uh, systems in buildings and uh Pretty well, everything we do uh, ends up saving energy, and we, so we work on the efficiency of commercial buildings. Uh, going way back, we were involved in and are still involved in uh, in controlling fan activity in parking garages uh, to try and keep the energy uh, reduced as much as possible, but still maintain the safety factor that a parking garage requires. Uh, but we've also moved uh, to a large extent into uh, controlling ventilation in commercial buildings based on occupancy. And uh, it, this is something that's been around for quite a while, but it's still a very small percentage of buildings, even though some areas now with a new building, it's code. But uh, there's a small percentage of buildings that are actually controlled by CO2 monitoring uh, to activate HVAC systems based on how many people are in the space rather than letting them run full speed based on uh, engineering design of maximum occupancy. Well, you guys have always been in the sensor business uh, for commercial buildings uh, to make it more efficient for the, the, the client, if you will. But the last couple of years, you guys have developed a, a strong wireless sensor and the capability which will expect rapid growth going forward. Where do we stand on that product? Well, and we've actually uh, moved it into, uh, we've got more than just the product, but it started with uh, our ability to, uh, we we were able to connect with a company based in, in the UK that had developed, a, I think the uh, actually the, the uh, military people had developed the uh, type of CO2 sensor that for, uh, uh, I guess, chemical warfare application or something like that. But it, it ended up, these people bought the uh, rights to it and started producing this sensor. And wireless CO2 has not been available until this recent times because all the wireless, all the uh, CO2 sensors were built based on uh, infrared technology, which used a little bulb in the in in this part of the uh, core material, and so their power draw was too high. And <clears throat> where uh, uh, temperature sensors, humidity sensors, pressure sensors have been wireless for a long time in buildings, there was no CO2 sensors wireless. And so uh, when these people came up with this LED-based uh, unit, we were we were quite interested in it, and we took that product, which draw draws about one percent of the energy that the other commercial CO2 sensors would draw, and we worked closely with a company, a U.S. company, that was very strong in in. Uh, uh, wireless radio technology, and we developed this combination CO2 sensor and wireless. Uh, we actually do it with a Wi-Fi signal, and so that we're able to uh, send a wireless signal uh, based on the number of people in a space now instead of having to wire in uh, sensors all through the building. 
and it's it's a huge saving. The, the people doing uh, dem- it's called demand controlled ventilation. The uh, DCV we call it for short, but it's it that's the technology for uh, for controlling HVAC systems based on occupancy. And and so uh, what we do now we've we've kind of moved it past the first fa- the stage of just having a signal send, and we've partnered with a company that's very strong uh, interface interface technology provider, and. Uh, so we can send a Wi-Fi signal, for instance, to a rooftop air handler, and uh, there, and we have a uh, an, an interface um, piece of equipment there that will take the Wi-Fi signal and convert it to an analog signal to to run the HVAC, and we've even moved it along now to where we can discover faults with HVAC equipment, like uh, whether it's the uh, the uh, economizer that they use on a lot of the buildings are are just the RTU itself, the uh, the uh, air handler, and uh, so they they can uh, now not only control the uh, the input or the use of of energy coming into the building, but can also provide uh, very strong information as to exactly how well those Units are operating because uh, that's another energy-saving feature in the in the system now, and so we've moved it quite a long ways from where we started, just with the wireless CO2. And we work not only in in the case of a supermarket, we have uh, a large number of things. We control humidity. We control the outside air coming in, as far as the humidity levels go, and uh, so. We do the demand controlled ventilation. We do dew point monitoring to make sure that the uh, that the air in there is not getting too high where it might uh, cause condensation on on uh, cabinets and so on. And uh, and then we also have the fault detection and and uh, and we even do we've moved into uh, monitoring chillers in large buildings using the same kind of uh, sensor technology with that interface type uh, technology company that we partner with and uh, so we can add that to part of our savings. So the savings in a supermarket with a full package are pretty substantial. The, we're, we're finding that we're getting uh, uh, just in the initial ones that we've analyzed that we're looking at uh, probably less than a six month payback on the full cost of the Product where they and particularly where they have rebates for energy saving, places like California and Florida and uh, and Ontario for that matter, uh, all have pretty strong rebates for saving energy. So that works to the advantage of bo- both the uh, user and and uh, ourselves for that matter. In that in that it creates a lot more opportunity. My guest today is George Graham. He's the CEO of Airtest Technologies Inc. Well, they trade on the OTC markets, ticker symbol AATGF. They also trade up on the uh, TSX Venture at AAT. Let me ask you this, George, why I got you here on the show. Uh, Do you think that the revenues for 2018 are going to be greater than the revenues for 2017? Oh, definitely. Uh, we, 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 We have had, like a lot of public companies, it's not always easy arranging the type of financing that you need to grow the to you know aggressively pursue your business plan, but uh, we are in a process right now. If we finally got to where we can develop the type of financing that will allow us to go full speed, even without adequate with a difficult cash flow situation through a lot of last year, we still grew 18% over the previous year, and this year we expect to grow. Uh, we, a lot more than that. We we think it'll be somewhere between 50 and 100 percent, but it depends how quickly we can get, you know, uh, everything in place that we need. We know the market quite well, and and the interesting thing that we have is there's a lot of um, chains and uh, that are, have put in demand control ventilation using hardwired products. Like for instance, our sensors went into 600 Lowe's stores. 
And, uh, you know, that's just one example. Walmart do it. Uh, uh, there's quite a few companies. J.C. Penney have done it. And uh, some of the uh, pharmacies and one large chain in Canada, the uh, Shoppers Drug Mart, put uh, demand control ventilation in their stores. So all these people that have done these, and there's probably about 25 chains that we know of that have put uh, CO2 sensors in and uh, hardwired them through their stores, and they've been satisfied with the energy-saving results using that system. But with our Wi-Fi system now, we're less than half the cost mm. of of the previous uh, hardwired type systems, which we sold ourselves, you know, earlier, and we still do for certain applications. But more and more, I think it will move towards uh, the wireless because uh, you know it's it's so easy to install. We can where it used to take three or four days of wiring sensors into into a building. Now, in in less than one day, they can be fully operational. So it's uh, and and in the smaller stores, we've got a product now we sell for just a, a small retail store. This is a new a new one that we've developed that's uh, very low cost. And uh, they can install this one in about 45 minutes. It's really a simple. And it, it, it again just has a Wi-Fi sensor, goes to a rooftop air handler, controls the rooftop air handler. It'll save in a retail store. It'll save somewhere between 15 and 30 percent of their annual energy cost. And in a small store, that's not a lot. But if it's in a chain where they have 1,500 stores, all of a sudden yeah, it that, becomes a pretty big number. Absolutely. George, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Is there anything that we didn't get a chance to touch upon that you would like to get out there to the listeners in closing? I don't know. I, there's, <laughs> we're involved in so many things in that whole area right now. The one thing we have done is uh, also we've developed uh, – there's a company uh, that – makes large dehumidification equipment and we found that the ability to monitor the chillers is the same technology pretty well as what we needed to monitor these dehumidification equipment which up till now have not had any kind of sensor monitoring to really provide a data flow you know as to what's what's happening with the unit right, uh, right. On, on a regular basis so we we're, we're doing a lot in that whole area of of uh, you know, uh, wireless monitoring, and uh, a lot of it we tie in with Bluetooth and so on. You know, to provide uh, detailed information, a data stream that could go to a smartphone, computer, or whatever. And so, uh, you know, we're we're trying to move into the IoT world. Although you're talking to a guy who's been around quite a long time, and I have to rely on some of the people. You know, in our organization and and our associate companies to to because they're really it's amazing how fast it's moving towards towards that end of things. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and and giving us an update. It's always a pleasure. The only thing that I ask of you, George, is that next time you don't wait uh, ten months to come on my show. <laughs> okay, we'll try and be a little more. Probably, it'll be a busy. It'll be a busy few months, whatever it is. And so, it'll, right now, it's at a stage where the next time we come on, we 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 uh, we'll be able to talk more about results of the programs that we've initiated, and uh, as opposed to we we have some results, but we're really moving forward fairly quickly. So it'll be interesting to see, in, you know, in a few months, how that. Uh, that whole those programs are working. Air test technology is. Well, I want my listeners to take a look at it. I think they're going to have a big year in 2018. I think they're very undervalued here at a market cap of under 1.5 million. The stock fluctuates between three and a half cents to five cents. George, thank you very much for coming on the show. Hopefully, you'll come back on in 50 or 60 days and give us an update. Thank you, Everett. It'd be my pleasure. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or this station.